years ago. Uh, it's a wonderful institution, and I was pleased to have a chance to ask the crowd that night when I shared it, who was president of the United States when Perkins was originally founded? Because I wanted to give people some sense about how long Perkins has been part of the landscape and serving uh, people with disabilities. And, uh, and interestingly enough, there were, I think, three or four hundred people in the room, and only one person knew the answer. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just put that one out to the crowd and see if anybody knows the answer here. It was Andrew Jackson, predated the Civil War. That's how long Perkins has been serving folks with disabilities here in Massachusetts. Um, I appreciate the chance to be here today. I was spent four years working in health and human services when I was uh, working in the Well and Solution Administration. So I have a lot of familiarity with the issues that we folks deal with every day. And after 10 years of 10 months on the campaign trail, I can tell you that uh, one of the things I hear over and over again, especially when I talk to folks uh, who are involved in the health and human service community, is the difficulty and the complexity of the way health and human services is organized, the way health and human services operates as a bureaucracy. And this is something that I have a particular interest in because uh, I'm one of these people who thinks that over the course of the past several years, when the state probably should have been thinking about simplifying the way state government is organized and simplifying the way state government works, instead, we've been operating with what I would describe as the same model we've always had and haven't taken seriously this opportunity to streamline the way, uh, the way state government generally Works. And I'll just give you a few examples of what I mean by that. Um, state government, Health and Human Services, just to pick one, has about 150 area offices. It's got 40, uh, almost 50 task forces of one sort or another. Um, represents approximately 18 or 19 agencies, depending on how you count them. Um, and it has uh, approximately 25,000 people working for it. Uh, that's just on the state side, not counting the 1,200 plus or minus provider organizations work on the private side. And it's always troubled me that um, in this day and age when we know so much about, um, about technology and information technology and data and all the rest, that we still operate most of those health and human service agencies as if they are what I would describe as sort of silos or still fights from one to another. And as a result, instead of having one policy with respect to things like medication administration, have many policies with respect to medication administration. Instead of having one policy with respect to rate setting and pricing, we have many policies with respect to rate setting and pricing. And instead of having one policy for billing and coding and all those administrative activities, we have many policies with regard to that. Same thing goes for a lot of our quality assurance programs, same thing goes um, for the way we do a number of issues around authorization and intake and, and case management. And I look at all that and I say to myself, first of all, it's tremendously complex for the folks who are trying to provide services to folks who are being served by health agencies that do business with health and human services. Secondly, it's incredibly complex for health and human service agencies to manage and oversee. I don't understand why we don't, why we don't have one policy with respect to medication administration. I don't understand why we don't have one policy with regard to a lot of our reporting requirements. I don't understand why we don't have one policy with regard to many of these parts of health and human services because what we get in the end is a lot of administrative activity, a lot of what I would describe as sort of the cost of serving people with disabilities, and a lot of lost effort and time and money and resources that get tied up in all of this stuff. And the tragedy with that is that health and human services is one of those areas where Every dollar should be spent on programming. And right now, when you look at what state agencies spend on administration and what the, the entities that serve folks with disabilities serve, you're probably talking about somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of a big piece of the money that's associated with health and human services services being spent on administrative activities. And at a point in time, the state faces enormous fiscal challenges and enormous fiscal uh, issues and concerns. I think we should be far more aggressive about coming up with a simpler way to organize and structure health and human services so that state government operates in a simpler way and the agencies that actually do business with state government operate in a simpler way as well. It would save money, I think a lot of money, a lot of money, um, and it would be uh, much better than what we've been for the past couple of years, which 
It's like a basic model of a suit way of this type of program. The other kinds of stuff we talked about with regard to this, we talked about pension reform for state government. Pension reform would save a lot of money. And also is something that fundamentally is an issue of fairness for everybody else. Most people don't appreciate the fact that a big piece of what they pay in taxes every single year ultimately goes to benefits that they don't think a lot of folks who are paying the bills can access to the private sector. Retiree health insurance reform. Another example of a place where we have an unsustainable, unaffordable model that's definitely needed reform. The Pachico law. I know the Pachico law is not exactly what I would describe as a hot topic in most places, but the inability of state government, the unwillingness of state government, to take on the fact that people truly can't contract out services anymore, and truly engage private providers and other organizations in opportunities to come up with smarter and better ways to do services for less, inhibits state government's ability, especially in health and human services, to do a better job on behalf of the population we serve. The final thing I'll mention with regard to this is because of the Pachico law and a lot of this other stove pipe and silo activity that goes on, it's much harder to do consumer directed programming in Massachusetts than it is to do consumer directed programming in many other states. And there are many other states now that are much farther down the road with regard to developing a much more uh, comprehensive approach to consumer directed programming than we are here in Massachusetts. We're still basically working on what I would call categorical approach to service delivery. State decides it wants to buy X amounts of service or something, that's what becomes available, that's what people can buy. That's not the smart way to think about this. The smart way to think about this is to build a program where consumers can have access to the services that they're looking for and that they need to support themselves, especially living in the most independent um, and, and, and integrated environment they can find. And the way we set this up makes it much harder for them to do that. Um, the, the two other things I just want to mention with regard to this. Number one, um, when I worked in health and human services, we did a pretty aggressive and appropriate job of taking that least restrictive setting motion seriously. We did a lot of consolidation within the facility system, creating some alternative, um, both uh, housing and residential capabilities for working with disabilities, but most importantly of all, um, always kept in the back of our mind this notion that the best place to serve somebody is in the, the least restrictive setting, and we made a fair amount of significant progress with regard to that. I think that's something that's fundamental to the way we ought to be delivering services. And again, I come back to this notion we have more integrated health and human services. It wasn't so siloed, we have far more ability and capability to deliver that kind of service on behalf of the people that you all serve. Um, just two other quick things. One is that um, I believe this silent approach to services also affects one of the other issues you raised in your questions, which is the ability to establish a comprehensive program with regard to work. Um, I've been astonished by how complex and difficult it is for folks who want to develop um, programming capability and, uh, and, and service support for people with disabilities who want to work to find a way to fit that into the state's existing bureaucracy. There really isn't much of a connection between HRD and job developer activity that goes on. There isn't really much of an There is sort of no online capability for people to sort of job shop and pursue the skill sets and the capabilities that are required to fill the jobs that are available. And again, I blame a lot of this on the fact that we don't have a particularly integrated approach that thinks comprehensively about work for people with disabilities in the way it works for people with disabilities. And the one final point I'll make with regard to some of the stuff you asked about before, uh, I don't think we with regard to health care, but one of the major issues we face with health care is the lack of publicly available data around what things cost and how people perform. Many, many, many services in health care vary in price from place to place to place by a staggering amount. Not 10%, not 20%, not 40%, but as much as 100, 200, or 300 percent from place to place to place. And until we put that data into the public domain, until we disclose publicly the fact that the same service provided to the same person with the same outcome can vary in price by as much as three or four hundred percent, five hundred percent in some cases, I don't know how we'll ever wrap our arms around uh, the cost question in healthcare and have an open and informed and honest discussion.